Dr. Rico here. This is a lecture from my mini course, Robotic Planning and Kinematics. The syllabus and notes are in the description. All right, welcome to Geometric Properties of Rotations, part of the chapter Introducing Kinematics and Rotation Matrices. All right, let's get started. Let us now begin to study rotations in some detail. For now, let us just understand geometrically what properties a rotation should have. We will later study how to represent rotations algebraically and how to manipulate them. Geometric properties of rotations. Rotations are operations on free vectors. They preserve length of vectors and angles between vectors. Two, in three-dimensional space, there are three independent basic rotations. In vehicle kinematics, three basic angles are roll, pitch, and yaw, as illustrated in figure 6.2 below. So, roll, pitch, and then yaw. Three, rotations can be composed, and the order of composition is essential. Four, each rotation admits an inverse rotation. Five, each rotation is a rotation about a rotation axis of a rotation angle. Also, each rotation leaves its own rotation axis unchanged. As you rotate about the axis, the direction that the axis is pointing doesn't change. Rotations do not commute, i.e. the order of composition is essential. Let us now expand a little bit on the fourth property. The order of composition is essential. Imagine that we perform either one of the following two operations. And in this, we will reference this figure, and we will assume that the reference frame is fixed and does not rotate with the body, although we will make that distinction more explicitly later on. So, composed rotation number two is rotate about axis z naught by pi over 2 and then about axis x naught by pi over 2. Okay? So z naught first, then x naught. So you see that along this first row in the figure, we see a rotation. The sides of this cube are labeled A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? You can only see A, B, and C from this view. We first rotate in this composed rotation number two, as it's called. We first rotate about Z naught by pi over two, 90 degrees. We see the result of that rotation in this figure. So now this B face has moved over to this side and the C face has stayed where it was before. It's now oriented differently, but uh, it's still on top. And the D face is now facing us whereas previously it was on the back left and we couldn't see it. Now we see the next rotation that we'll do, which is a rotation of pi over two about the x naught axis. Whenever we specify a rotation about an axis, the direction of that rotation is given by the right hand rule. We point our thumb, this is my right hand, point our thumb in the direction of the axis, arrow, positive arrow, and this curl of our fingers is the direction of positive rotation. So positive pi over two rotation about x naught is a rotation this way. So we will see B become the top of the cube now. E was on the bottom in this figure, and now it is on the right-hand side. D, the face that was already on the left, will again be on the left, although its orientation has changed. Okay, so that was composed rotation number two, we call it. Composed rotation number one, I'm trying to really be confusing here, as confusing as possible, you know, keep out the business majors. So rotate about axis x naught 
by pi over two. So x naught is this axis right here. So we rotate about it by pi over two. So now this a side will be on top. The b side will still be facing us, but it will change orientation. The c side will rotate out of view and we'll pick up the e side, which is now visible in the second figure in the bottom row. So we're now ready to rotate about z naught by pi over two. And that will move B over here, as we see in the figure. C comes from behind. The uh, C was in the back before. A is there, but again, in a new orientation. And what might be surprising to us at this point is that although we did the same two rotations, a rotation about X naught and a rotation about Z naught of pi over two, we have when taken in a different order, it has resulted in these two different orientations of this object. So the result of this is that the order matters. The order of the rotations matters. And this is true of coordinate frames that are stationary like these and those that rotate with the body as well. Okay, let's take a look at the next section. Rotations may not be composed as though they were arrays. In addition is what we might specify here. If we were to compose them as additive arrays, we would uh, get the wrong result. So this is our, our first attempt is to say, oh, let's compose these through addition. But we'll see that that doesn't work. Imagine we represent a rotation as an array of the form roll pitch yaw. Okay, imagine now the sequence plus 90 degree pitch, plus 90 degree roll, minus 90 degree pitch. By rotating a rigid body with one's own hands using the convention in figure 6.2 above, readers should convince themselves that the composite rotation equals negative 90 yaw. Okay, so yaw was the side to side rotation, right? However, if we write this fact as an equation between arrays, we find the following contradiction. If we simply sum the pitch of 90 degrees, which was our first rotation, a roll of 90 degrees, which was our second, and our third rotation, a pitch of negative 90 degrees, we do not have, if we sum these arrays in the usual array summation operation, we do not get what we know to be the correct answer for the final orientation of this object. This object we know is going to end up having negative 90 in yaw as its final orientation. However, simply summing these arrays, as we hoped would give us the result we were looking for, um, didn't work out for us. And if we remember from the previous section that, well, the order matters for this composition, there was no way this was going to work, right? Because for a sum, the order doesn't matter. So we know that there will be an operation, a mathematical operation, an algebraic operation that will correspond to this, but it's not going to be a sum because the order of the sum uh, doesn't matter. Okay, the lesson of this simple calculation is as follows. If we adopt column arrays to represent rotations, we may not sum column arrays to compute the composite rotation, i.e. the composition of subsequent rotations. This first attempt at modeling rotations using column arrays is therefore unsuccessful. So please don't use the method of 6.1. This not equal sign should be a sign not to use it, but just an extra warning not to use this equation when composing rotations. All right, we'll look a little bit further into this in the next lecture. I'll see you then.